the curtain falls on fight camp in just 24 hours time. Last year, Alexander Povetkin was the last man standing. Who will it be this year? Ricard Bolotniks or Joshua Boazzi? High stakes in our light heavyweight main event here at fight camp. And uh, Darren Barker, we're here at the way in this afternoon. I can't believe it's nearly over, mate. I know. It's always sad. Last year we was uh, distraught, weren't we? Mm. Uh, my cricket days have been over since uh, last year's fight camp. But yeah, it is the last one, but what a way to end the show. I mean, the top of the bill for me is one of the best fights out there. It's a blinder. If you know your boxing uh, and, you've, and you've studied Bacard Bolotniks, you know he's a serious fighter. And Boatsy, we see him last time out. He's a um, he's, future star. Of British boxing. I guess we find out tonight. We'll uh, we find, find out, out tomorrow night. Yeah. yeah. Um, five fights on the televised bill starts at seven o'clock local time uh, on the zone around the world. Uh, of course, here in the UK. Um, two fights on before the bell, which starts at half past five local time uh, here in England. The first uh, of those is Elf Barrett and uh, Vero Simeon. Um, eight three-minute rounds of lightweight contest, uh, and both the guys are now ready to weigh in. So I'll hand you over to RMC for the afternoon, Mr. David Diamante. Well, ladies and gentlemen, what an absolute pleasure it is to welcome everybody here to Matchroom Headquarters in Brentwood, Essex, England, for the official weigh-in for the third and final week of Fight Camp 2021. And it's all being brought to you courtesy of Mr. Eddie Hearn of Matchroom Boxing. We are sponsored by Betfred, StubHub, Wow Hydrate, and JD Sports. Now on Saturday night, all of the bouts will be sanctioned under the auspices of the British Boxing Board of Control and the steward in charge is Mr. Charles Giles. And of course, all the action will be streamed exclusively live around the world on the zone. Ladies and gentlemen, seven fights, three title fights, and one world title eliminator. So without further ado, let's go ahead and bring the fighters up to the stage so they can face the scale and face each other. Our first contest, eight rounds in the lightweight division. And now making his way to the stage, please welcome his record 22 and 6 with nine knockouts, fighting out of Bucharest, Romania. Here is Valerio Bombardier Simeon. Simeon. And his opponent now making his way to the stage. His professional record, 25 victories, only one defeat. He has 15 wins coming by way of knockout. Fighting out of Manchester, England, here is the reigning Commonwealth and IBF Intercontinental Super Featherweight Champion, Zelfa Brown Flash Barrett. Barrett. And now to the scale, ladies and gentlemen. Viorel Bombardier Simeon. One hundred and thirty nine and three quarter pounds for Simeon. And now to the scale. The young Mancunian prospect, Zelfa Brown Flash Barrett. One thirty six and one quarter for Zelfa Barrett. Barrett v. Simeon, eight rounds lightweight to kick us off Saturday night, matchroom boxing and the zone. 
So this uh, kicks off action on Before the Bell, around about half past five local time uh, tomorrow. Zelfa Barrett uh, back in action for the first time um, since that controversial victory over Kiko Martinez, which he says he wants to defend, uh, he wants to avenge. Um, for Simeon, hasn't had a significant win since that victory over Andoni Gargo for about four years ago mm. now. Um, so he, we know, is, is kind of past his best, but the aim is for Zelfa to go out and make a statement. And I think you expect him to get the job done inside the distance. I think so. I said you there about four or five rounds. Yeah. Uh, I've seen him last time out, Scully, you know, he was he was hurt around the body quite a lot. So I think he'll target the body and, and he should get to work uh, and get the job done around four or five, I think. OK, um, big night for Rhys Bellotti, who opened the show uh, against Jordan Gill unsuccessfully, it has to be said, this time last year. He's up uh, against the young American prospect Ray Ford, who himself coming off the back of a controversial draw. These two meet in battle in our second contest of the night. Uh, let's head back over to David. Ladies and gentlemen, our next contest, 10 rounds for the vacant WBA Continental Featherweight Championship. And now making his way to the stage, his professional record, 14 victories, 4 defeats. He has 12 of his 14 wins coming by way of knockout. He fights out of South Oxy, Watford, England. Here is the former English Commonwealth and WBC International Silver Featherweight Champion, Reese. Bomber Bellotti. Bellotti. And his opponent now making his way to the stage. His professional record is undefeated thus far. Eight wins, no defeats, one draw. He has four wins coming by way of knockout. Here is the talented young prospect fighting out of Camden, New Jersey, USA, Raymond Savage Ford. Ford. Now to the scale, ladies and gentlemen, the bomber, Reese Bellotti. One twenty five and a quarter for Reese Bellotti, one twenty five and a quarter. And now to the scale, ladies and gentlemen, the, undefe the undefeated Raymond Savage Ford. One twenty-six, bang on, one hundred and twenty-six pounds even for Raymond Savage Ford. Raymond Ford v. Reese Bellotti, 10 rounds for the vacant WBA Continental Featherweight Championship. So Ray Ford looking to get back to winning ways uh, after that uh, draw with Aaron Perez. Uh, I think sometimes over eight rounds you can get a little bit complacent in the early stages. I think he was guilty of almost data gathering, waiting a little bit too long. And you know, I mean, you give away two of the first four rounds yeah. against a fighter and they pinch you know, one of, of the last four. Suddenly, if a judge sees it a different way, you, you find yourself staring in the face of a draw. Craig Richards had the same thing yeah. um, not too long before he fought Dimitri Bivol. It can mm. happen. And, and perhaps he got a little bit complacent. He said that yeah. you know, he felt that... There was a lot um, going on. Yeah, there. he said he's just, he just became a dad for the first time, and then that, of course, can, can put pressures on a fighter. But he wants to prove that he's much better than that. But I think there's question marks, Chris. Do you? If I'm honest, I, you know, I didn't, he didn't look comfortable on the back foot. When he's in the centre of the ring and he's let his hands go, he looks a million dollars on the back foot. Not so much. OK, well, one man we know loves to fight in the pocket on the front foot is Cash Farouk. He's in another tough test against a Mexican with a fabulous story uh, in Luis Gerardo Castillo. This is the first show, uh, first bout on the zone broadcast, 7 o'clock local time. Let's hand you over to David uh, to introduce both the fighters to the stage. Ladies and gentlemen, our next contest to weigh in. 10 rounds for the vacant WBC International Bantamweight Championship. And now making his way to the stage, his professional record, 28 victories, two defeats. He has 18 big wins coming by way of knockout. Damas y caballeros, presentando el hijo de Jiquipilco, Estado de México, México. Please welcome La Sombra, Gerardo Castillo. 
Castillo. And his opponent now making his way to the stage. His professional record, 15 victories, only one defeat. He has six wins coming by way of knockout. Fighting out of Glasgow, Scotland. Here is the former Scottish area, British, and WBC International Silver but Bantamweight Champion, the untouchable Cash Farouk. Farouk. And now to the scale, ladies and gentlemen, Gerardo Castillo. One sixteen and a quarter for La Sombra. One sixteen and a quarter for Castillo. And now to the scale, the untouchable Cash Farouk. One seventeen and a half for Cash Farouk. One seventeen and a half. Farouk V. Castillo, 10 rounds for the vacant WBC International Bantamweight Championship Matchroom Boxing. Difficult one to um, to call this because there isn't a great deal on Luis Gerard no, Castillo. No, there isn't. And, you know, look, looking at his record and, and hearing from his coach, he said, look, I don't even think the, the two defeats that were on his record were defeats. You could be looking at a kid that's 30 and 0 with, uh, with 18 stoppages. And mm -hmm. that, I mean, we know for, it deals with Mexican style well, but that is a danger man if ever we've seen it. Well, absolutely, especially with the backstory mm -hmm. and what he's going through and what he's trying to achieve to change his life. And those who, I'm sure you have heard it, if you haven't, go and check it out on, on all the Matrim's uh, channels. You'll, you'll find out a bit about him. But it's a, it's a remarkable story. And when you've got someone like that who's trying to change their life um, dangerous very dangerous and the thing is we, he, I don't suppose the team have seen much of him so he's an unknown quantity how do you devise a game plan when you don't really know how the guy boxes mm. dangerous very very interesting that uh, that's 10 rounds uh, for the WBC international bantamweight title super bantamweight hope price continues his apprenticeship he's up against Claudio Grande ahead of a, a big clash with Zahid Hussain the current central area featherweight champion on the Josh Warrington undercard on the 4th of September um, so he cannot afford a slip up young hope price he is ready to weigh in as is Claudio Grande back to David Ladies and gentlemen, our next contest, six rounds of boxing scheduled in the super bantamweight division. And we've got two young undefeaters going against each other head to head. Introducing first to the stage, professional record, five wins, no defeats. He has three wins coming by way of knockout. Fighting out of Massa, Toscana, Italia. Please welcome Claudio Super Grande. Grande. And his opponent now making his way to the stage. Also a perfect professional record. Four fights, four victories. One of them coming by way of knockout. Here is the highly skilled young southpaw prospect fighting out of Leeds, England. Hopi Price. Price. And out of the scale, ladies and gentlemen. Claudio, super grande. One twenty-one and a half for grande. One twenty-one and a half for Claudio, super grande. 
And now to the scale, the undefeated young charge from Leeds, Hopi Price. One twenty-three and three quarters for Hopi Price. One twenty-three and three quarter pounds. Price v. Grande, six rounds, super bantamweight, Saturday night, matchroom boxing, and the zone. Yeah, it's a super bantamweight contest, though. It's been made at 124 pounds, I guess, because um, they don't want to boil Hopi all the way down to 122, knowing he's going to box there in four weeks' yeah. time. Um, looking physically much stronger, yeah. isn't he? Starting to go from boy to man now, isn't he? Yeah, you can just look at the confidence on his face. He's just always smiling. He loves the sport. He lives and breathes it. Uh, he's got a great coach in, in Dave Caldwell who truly believes in him. And the journey's been fantastic. And uh, this, is a, this is another one that Grande, we've not been able to find much on him. But he's unbeaten. There's three stoppages in the in the five wins so he's coming to win he's coming like all of these uh, away fighters to come in and potentially change his life uh, change his life okay so that's uh, second on the televised bill third is the excellent michael mckinson who made a big statement of world to weight um, with the beating of chris congo earlier on this year in gibraltar he's up against shemish lavronoski uh, this one is uh, a 10 round of three minute rounds uh, for the wbo global title and i'll hand you back over to david and now, ladies and gentlemen, 10 rounds of boxing scheduled for the WBO Global Welterweight Championship. Introducing up first to the stage, his professional record, 19 victories, only one defeat. He has five wins coming by way of knockout. He fights out of Swupska, Poland. He's the former WBCU silver and intercontinental champion. Please welcome Shemysław Ronowski. Ronowski. And his opponent now making his way to the stage. He is the defending titleist. His professional record, a perfect one. 20 fights, 20 victories, two wins coming by way of knockout. Fighting out of Portsmouth, England, here is the reigning, defending, undefeated WBO Global Welterweight Champion, ranked number four in the world by the WBO, Mikey, the problem, McKinson. McKinson. And now to the scale, ladies and gentlemen, Shemisław Ronowski. One forty-six and a quarter. One forty-six and a quarter for the challenger, Shemisław Ronowski. And now to the scale, the undefeated charge from Pompey. Here is Mikey, the problem McKinson. 146 and one half, 146 and one half for the defending champion, Mikey, the problem McKinson. McKinson v. Shemiswaf, 
Ten rounds for the WBO Global Welterweight Championship. Saturday night, matchroom boxing and the zone. And WBO global title over the uh, shoulder of Michael McKinson, but more importantly, fourth place in those WBO rankings to uh, to protect. Expecting a clinic from him? Yeah, do you know what? This is no disrespect to Ranowski at all. I think he's a credible opponent. I think he's a very good opponent for Mickinson, but I think Mickinson pretty much wins every round. Right. I, I could, and that's because I'm impressed with him. I think he's so awkward. He's so slick. He's quick. He, Again, I've said it before, his, his, his nickname, the problem, is, mm. is so perfect for him. And I, I expect him to, to put in a clinic. OK, so that is uh, third before the top of the uh, the bill. The chief support, Joe Caldina, back in action um, against Joshua Hernandez from the United States. This one could be fight of the night or close to it, certainly. Um, both guys ready to weigh in 10 rounds uh, at lightweight. This has handed you back over to David. Ladies and gentlemen, it's now time to weigh in the chief support for Saturday night's great night of fights. And it's a 10-round lightweight affair. Making his way to the stage at this time, 10 wins, 3 defeats. He has 8 wins coming by way of knockout. He represents Laris Puerto Rico and fights out of Chicago, Illinois, USA. Here is the Windy City Kid, Joshua Hernandez. Hernandez. And his opponent now making his way to the stage. He is a 2016 Olympian, and he now boasts a perfect professional record. 12 fights, 12 victories, seven of them coming by way of knockout. Fighting out of Cardiff, Wales. Here is the former British and Commonwealth and the reigning and undefeated WBA Continental Super Featherweight Champion, the Welsh Wizard, Joe Cordina. Cordina. And now to the scale, ladies and gentlemen, Joshua Hernandez. One thirty-two and three quarters for the Windy City Kid. One thirty-two and three quarters for Joshua Hernandez. And out of the scale, the undefeated Welsh Wizard Joe Cordina. One thirty four, bang on, one thirty four, even. Joe Cordina v. Joshua Hernandez, 10 rounds, lightweights, chief support, Saturday night, Fight Camp 2021. So this one made it 134, of course, because Cordina was due to box in about four weeks from now. And I guess weight-wise, they didn't yeah. want to kind of bring him all the way down. It probably suited Hernandez um, as well. But I think over the 10 rounds, that probably suits Cordina, doesn't it? Having an extra three or four rounds to play with, being a little bit stronger. Um, but oh. it's, it's going to be about whether Hernandez can unsettle him early and whether he feels that power. Yeah, yeah, look, Hernandez... Um He's a very good body puncher. He likes to force the action. Uh, Joe, we know how slick he is. Um, but it's just that question mark about the punch power. When he steps through the level, is he going to be able to stop people in his track? So that's always going to remain the question. I think that it will carry on into this fight. Can he stop Hernandez coming forward? And he's such a classy fighter, Joe. Um, just want to see him you know, bite down on that gum shield and really put his shots together. Great stuff. Well, he's Olympic uh, stable mate from Rio, Joshua Boazzi. is our headline attraction. He is in the acid test of his career so far against Ricard Bolotnik. WBA world title eliminated between these two over 12 rounds at 175. They are ready to weigh in. Let's head back over to David. 
Ladies and gentlemen, it's now time to weigh in the main event for Saturday night's huge night of boxing. 12 rounds for the WBA light heavyweight world title eliminator. And now making his way to the stage, here is the chat. Well, he's actually not the challenger because the WBA international title is not on the line. This is a world title eliminator. Now making his way to the stage, 18 wins, five defeats, one draw. He has eight wins coming by way of knockout. Fighting out of Riga, Latvia, he is the reigning WBO European light heavyweight champion, ranked number three in the world by the WBA. Here is Richard, the Lion Bolotniks. Bolotniks. And his opponent now making his way to the stage. Perfect professional record, 14 wins. No defeats. He has 12 wins coming by way of knockout. Fighting out of Croydon, London, England. He is the 2016 Olympic bronze medalist, ranked number two in the world by the WBA. Here is the reigning, defending, undefeated WBA international light heavyweight champion, Joshua Buatzi. Buatzi. And now to the scale, ladies and gentlemen, Richard, the Lion Bolotniks. One seventy four and a half for Richard, the Lion Bolotniks, one seventy four and a half. And now to the scale, the undefeated charge from Croydon, London, England, Joshua Buatzi. One seventy four and three quarter pounds, one seventy four and three quarters for Joshua Buatzi. Joshua Buatzi v. Richard Bolotniks, 12 rounds for the WBA light heavyweight world title eliminator. So the final stare down between these two before they meet in the ring in our headliner tomorrow night. And Buatzi refuses the uh, the fist bump, which is, well, unlike him, yeah, but is. he is also locked in. And, and we know what a compassionate guy is, how as any can be. But it, that kind of tunnel does narrow as fight night approaches. And, <laughs> and by the time he gets in the changing room, I'm lucky enough to have been there. He is fully, fully locked in and he will be. And he knows the seriousness oh. uh, of the man in front of him. And he knows the seriousness of the occasion as well. A absolutely. Look, this is a fight at the end of the day. You always try and show respect, but he's fired up for it and you, and you can understand it. Um, the pot of gold, for the winner here is so huge. This is potentially, you know, uh, goes on to uh, a world title final, final eliminator or a shot itself. You just don't know. It's massive. It's massive. And we get to find out how good, how really, you know, how good he really is. Remember how high Barry Hearn was on him after the Rio Olympic Games. He was one of the star performers of the entire competition. He came away with a bronze medal, but stopped uh, a couple of, of the best fighters in the world. And he put an absolute beating on Afil Ben Shabla, who's the best fighter on the African continent mm. um, at, at the weight and was still boxing in Tokyo. But he 
has had a slow bit of progress as a professional, obviously had a couple of injury problems and of course the pandemic has put pay to some of his ambitions and one or two slightly higher level fights fell through. A lot of the British opposition wouldn't fight him either, so he was not an easy guy to get those fights for. But this is one man who he knows is dangerous and is coming to win. And I think you would say a bona fide and a decent title eliminator at this stage, the winner should go on to maybe some sort of final eliminator. Definitely. I think, look, let's judge and criticise or praise Boatsy properly after this fight. Yeah. You know, because this is a proper, proper fight. Blotniks, he's no mug. He's a proper winner. We see that on the Golden Contract, etc. He's a handful. Desperate to win this in amazing shape. Let's judge Boatsy after this fight. But one thing's for sure, it's a massive fight. It's a huge fight. And the winner of this goes on to big things. And we'll be gobsmacked if it doesn't catch fire yeah. uh, at some point. 12 rounds, uh, title eliminator at 175. Joshua Boatsy and Ricardo Bolotniks topping a bill of seven fights here on the final night of Fight Camp. We'll be back tomorrow, half past five. Uh, local time for before the bell for those first two fights. Alfred Barrett, um, Reese Ford, uh, Reese Blotty and Ray Ford. Uh, but of course, you've got the Design Boxing Show a little bit earlier than that. So plenty of content across the Design platform and Matchroom Boxing social media all tomorrow. Have a good Friday night, guys, and we will see you tomorrow afternoon. Bye-bye.